Hello and welcome. This is Trevor Seven, and this is going to be a video about the PK diet. Uh, but before we get started, I was wondering if you notice anything different. We're shooting in HD now. <laughs> I knocked my old camera off my desk and broke it. I've had this Nikon P900 in my wish list on Amazon for ages, so I finally got it. And I also purchased a new Blue Yeti microphone for doing commentary. So hopefully you guys will notice a little improvement in the video and audio quality. And I was going to shoot this outside, but the wind was kind of interfering with the audio. So I thought I'd do it in front of this uh, beautiful Zodiac wheel tapestry. And uh, if you're wondering what these containers are, these are just metal containers where I store my Ormus. So before we get uh, too far into this, I just wanted to mention a few things for those of you who may not have time to watch the entire video. Basically what this uh, video is going to be about is the last four months of me experimenting with different foods and colloids. And in short, what I found, the foods that have the greatest positive influence on psychokinesis are the fruits that grow on trees and some of the nuts that grow on trees. And the colloid, now I've been taking silver for a long time, so perhaps you know I already have sufficient silver in my body, but the colloid that had the best influence on psychokinesis for me was uh, copper. So if you just increase your intake of foods that grow on trees and colloidal copper, you could likely see a pretty good improvement in your psychokinesis abilities. And another thing that's not going to be mentioned in, in the rest of this video uh, about diet is um, not only the things we food, the food that we eat and the things that we drink are considered diet, but everything that you put on your skin is absorbed so we shouldn't be putting anything on our skin that we, we couldn't eat and on top of that not only you know the things we put on our skin and the food and water that we drink but the everything that we see hear and do has an influence on our spirit so for watching a lot of you know like violent movies and playing violent video games and listening to negative information a lot this has a, a negative effect on our spirit so keep that in mind when I talk about cleaning up your diet. It's not just what you eat and drink, but also what we listen to, watch, do, say, and use on our skin. I guess some of you might be wondering, you know, what on flat earth does diet have to do with PK? Well, in my opinion, uh, the mind, body, and spirit are like three separate alchemy experiments all rolled into one real-time experience. I mean, our brain is literally made of what we eat and our body just simply won't function correctly or last very long if we don't eat the proper foods and in a roundabout way the foods we eat influence our spirit uh, by means of something that I call karmic calories or karmic consequences which I'll explain a little more later but again I want to get some important stuff up front here for those of you who aren't watching the whole video so another important point you need to know is that there are three energy pathways of the body and they are the blood the nerves and the lymph. Blood, nerves, and lymph are the three energy pathways of the body. Getting those all cleaned up and functioning properly will improve your PK. And the second thing I want you to know is that there are only two sides to chemistry. There's acid and alkaline. And acidity and alkalinity are measured in parts per hydrogen, known as pH, with seven pH being neutral. So anything below seven is acidic, and anything above seven is alkaline. And PK seems to work best when uh, our pH is balanced at 7. So get some pH strips, uh, experiment with your diet and your drinks to uh, get your pH under control and you should see improvements with a pH of 7. And uh, last but not least I want to mention uh, there are other things that we consume uh, <clears throat> like solar energy. So sun gazing will improve your pK as well as grounding. You know when we get our skin on non-conductive soil uh, it, it absorbs negative ions which is good for our body and improves our, our PK. So there are other things besides just diet and drink that will help us improve our PK but this this video focuses primarily on food and drink. Okay and I think that's about it and I'm not going to make you look at my ugly mug or this beautiful tapestry for the entire video because uh, frankly I'm going to use my new Blue Yeti microphone to do commentary and I'll probably just pop up some video and photos and text that kind of go along with what we're doing to keep it visually stimulating. But in my opinion, there are only two forms of currency, and that is time and attention. And I can't thank you guys enough for giving me your time and attention to listen to what I have to say about the PK diet. All right, no further ado, let's get this ball rolling. Okay, so I think we should probably get started with the three energy pathways of the body, the blood, the nerve, and the lymph. 
Now, the blood, we all know what that is, and it basically takes care of itself. I mean, our body automatically does whatever is needed to keep the blood clean, and the pH balanced at 7.4. And if it fails, we get sick and die. And frankly, there's not much we can do that directly influences the quality of our blood other than a proper diet and good, clean living. So uh, let's move on to the nervous system. The nervous system is an electrical network made of nerves and neurotransmitters. And it's probably the most complex system uh, known to man. And frankly, uh, it works perfectly if uh, the rest of our body is, is functioning properly. So let's uh, move right along to the lymphatic system, which is something we don't hear a lot about. Uh, the medical industry doesn't talk about lymph because that is the key to good health. And they're not in the business of creating uh, health in your life. They're in the business of selling you drugs. So the lymphatic system, like I said, is our body's plumbing system. And the lymph is the fluid that surrounds our cells, also known as interstitial fluid. And we have two interstitial fluids known as blood and lymph. And our lymph, much like the blood, strives to maintain a 7.4 pH in order to function properly. So if we eat or drink something acidic, uh, our body has a defense mechanism. It creates mucus to protect our cells and our organs from the acid. So when we consume things like... Um, Pop, for example, pop has a pH of three. I mean, it's horrible. That's probably the one. The worst thing you could do is drink pop. But all things like pop, alcohol, uh, candy, your meat, your dairy products, these are all very acidic. So every time we consume these things, our body has to produce more mucus. And over time, this accumulation of mucus begins to form a thick layer of plaque around all of our major organs, and including our intestines, which greatly diminishes our ability to absorb nutrients. And you probably notice when you eat uh, rich foods like uh, your meats and your cheeses and things that you kind of cough up phlegm after a meal. Well, that's not from the food. That is from your body. That is the mucus your body is creating to protect itself. And in my opinion, I think this whole protein thing uh, is a bunch of hype. I would avoid protein, particularly talking about doing PK. We need foods and, and drinks that support our upper circulation and our brain and nerves. And I would just avoid foods made of grains like breads and cereals and crackers and things because they just feed the bad bacteria, which eat away at our subtle energy. And in my opinion, the only thing our body really needs is amino acids, fat acids, and simple sugars. You can get all these things from a plant-based diet. And we're talking about energy here. And, you know, we throw this word energy around quite a bit, and I don't think we even know what energy is, but... Uh, the first form of energy, or the best energy to use for PK, is what I call source energy. And that's when it, you just kind of work as channeling energy, like you have energy going through you instead of from you. And I can't really explain how that works or tell you what to do to improve that. It's just something that comes with practice. So we'll move on to life force energy. And the Hindu call it prana, and some call it chi. Uh, I like chi just because that's a nice, simple word. But chi-enhancing foods also known as superfoods, are just nutrient-dense foods. And the ones that particularly are the best for uh, PK, telekinetic energy, are probably your, your nuts, particularly your raw walnuts, and your raw soaked uh, organic almonds. These are both an excellent source of healthy fats and high energy. And our berries, like our blackberries, blueberries, goji berries, and so on, uh, these, are, these have lots of antioxidants that combat free radicals, which will allow the energy to flow more freely and keep us healthy. And for um, solar energy, of course, I mentioned sun gazing, but you can get solar energy just from green, eating green vegetables and leafy greens. They are just packed full of chi. They contain chlorophyll, which in layman terms is just liquid sunlight. And the cells of most green plants are like little batteries that just instantly raise your vibration and electrical conductivity and stuff. So... And some other great chi boosters with uh, chlorophyll are wheatgrass, spirulina, blue-green algae, and my absolute favorite, sprouts. I mean, just look at this curly in photography of a sprout just exploding with life force energy. And sprouting is really easy. I mean, you can do it in a glass jar. But I highly recommend this little gadget that I found that's called the uh, Kitchen Garden. And I'll pop a link in the description down there. But you can grow a whole bunch of different uh, sprouts at a time. And I like to combine like a little bit of uh, radish and broccoli and stuff and throw it into my salads. And man, it just gives you an energy boost like nothing else. And I saved the best for last. Fruits. 
Freshly picked fruits from trees are the best PK boosters in the world. Uh, they have the most electricity, the most chi, and they have the lowest karmic consequences. I mean, think about it. Our creator put these, uh, you know, our fruits grow the highest physically. I mean, you know, they're the furthest from the ground, the closest to the sun, and the highest vibration metaphysically uh, because they don't have any karmic consequences, they don't cause a lot of pollution or anything. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think our creator was trying to tell us something about that. So uh, fruits are the best, and the ones that grow on trees are the best of the best. So to summarize, we get our healthy fats from our nuts, avocados and coconut oils and things like this, and we get our antioxidants from our berries, and we consume green veggies for solar energy. And we eat lots of fresh organic fruit to detoxify, rebuild, and refuel our body and our spirit. So, and I know it's kind of tough getting off of the old uh, SAD, but there are some great milk substitutes like coconut milk and almond milk. I thought it was going to be really tough getting off the milk because I love milk, and I don't miss it at all anymore. And there are some really delicious meat substitutes uh, by a company called Gardein, and that's available at like uh, veganessentials.com or any you know reputable vegan health store. And these uh, transitional foods are really ease you into it, you know, because you're going to miss that feeling of having warm food in your belly and stuff. So that'll really help you. Uh, get switched over to a healthy diet but that's just kind of a temporary thing because once you get on the fruits and the raw diet for a while the uh, benefits are remarkable and you'll have enough inspiration just from that to stay on the diet but in the meantime you're going to need some additional uh, education and inspiration so I'm going to refer you to a couple really good YouTube channels here and first and foremost would be Dr. Robert Morse now he's a, a licensed iridologist and al uh, natural path and he knows a lot of stuff he's been on both sides he's he's been an allopath doctor and he's been a natural healer for many many years this guy is a godsend i mean he has improved the lives and saved the lives of so many people he's just amazing i love him to death but his videos are in like one hour videos and they're sort of in a um, q a format so it's a little hard to get to the the information that you want and absorb it all so uh, if you have the time, I highly recommend Dr. Morse. Uh, watch all of his videos, and he's got hundreds of them. And you'll learn lots and lots of stuff that is really going to help you improve your health and diet. But if you're one of those people who can only listen to like a 10 to 20 minute video, uh, I would in, uh, recommend another channel by a friend of mine named Tom called Inspired by Nature. And he uh, has a lot of the same information that Dr. Morse is sharing, but he's putting it in small bite-sized videos and simple terms and this guy's talking from the heart and speaking from experience so he'll he'll give you the real scoop and some really good tips and he'll help you through it and we need to stay motivated and one of the sites that or one of the channels that helped keep me motivated was sweet natural living and i think these guys are brothers and they're just hardcore frugivores and they know all the ins and outs and they can tell you you know what's good what's bad and what to do and everything and another great one to keep you pumped up is uh, dan mcdonald aka the life regenerator and this guy's like a raw foodist on steroids i mean he, he's really uh, excited and has a lot to say and he'll keep you pumped up and motivated so check out the links in the description and check out these channels find somebody who resonates with you get yourself educated and keep yourself motivated and know this you're not doing it alone there is a huge wave of diet changes going on here as we all wake up and getting off of the dead animals and the processed foods is something that's a lot of people are doing you're not alone okay and I'm still in the process of doing it myself I'm not a hundred percent raw diet in fact on Sundays uh, I eat whatever I want sometimes I'll eat cheese or even some meat or something so I'm not perfect by any means but get the ball rolling get started visit one of these channels and uh, start changing your diet make it a gradual change and, and a permanent change okay so electricity that's another form of energy and I feel like I've beat this topic to death but man you got to have that Himalayan salt that's the best salt I've tried them all and that's the one that has the most electrical conductivity and it has the highest nutrients and uh, it's it's just the best so drink you some sole in the mornings and salt your food to taste with Himalayan salt and that will improve the electricity in your body but foods that are high in electricity uh, primarily due to their acids are our citrus fruits like our oranges and grapes limes and lemons and so on the acidity of citrus fruits acts sort of as an, an electrolyte that conducts electricity so like one lemon can produce 
uh, seven tenths of a volt, I believe, of electricity. So you can literally power stuff with a lemon. Now, electrical power increases as we consume more fruits. So, you know, eating one lemon, yeah, that's good. But if you can juice, you know, 10 of them and drink that, think of all the electricity you're putting into your body. That's awesome. And there are other foods that are high in electricity, but due to their potassium and ionic content. And these are tomatoes, carrots, potatoes, and cucumbers. So these are another way to get more electricity. And last but not least, uh, I want to mention the colloids, like our colloidal copper and gold and silver. And if you don't know what a colloid is, it's an electrolyte of pure water with metallic ions and microscopic charged particles. And electrolyte is just a fancy way of saying a liquid that carries an electrical current. And the metallic ions we're referring to today are copper, silver, and gold. Okay, and this is a TDS meter. And this is what I used to use to measure the PPM of colloids. But I found that uh, electrical conductivity meter is a, a more accurate reading. So, and it's called an ECM. And I did some testing with copper, silver, and gold, all of them at 10 ppm. And the electrical conductivity of copper was 23, and silver was 25, which is just, you know, a, a smidge higher. And gold was 77. And I, you know, I assumed the gold was going to do the most for me. But in terms of psychokinesis, it didn't really do much. But it did improve my intuition, I mean, considerably. So if you're into, like, uh, ESP and precognition and... Um, clairvoyance and things, colloidal gold is the way to go. But for the psychokinesis, I think the copper and silver by far work better. Now copper, it's an essential micronutrient and it's so super good for us. I mean it's an antimicrobial, it's antioxidant, it's uh, anti-carcinogenic, anti-aging, anti-inflammatory. I mean it's super good. Copper, it's a natural remedy for things like uh, arthritis, gray hair, uh, sagging breasts, memory loss, wrinkles, varicose veins, uh, parasites, intestinal disorders, uh, viral and bac bacterial infections. And copper plays a very important role in the development of our immune system and metabolism. But most importantly, in regards to PK, uh, it has a lot to do with the production of the neurotransmitters and cellular energy production. And that's the key, I think. That's the little... The difference between silver and copper, I think, are those things. And colloidal copper also helps clean the lymphatic system, which is really super important. You'll find that when you get to Dr. Morse's channel. That's probably the most important thing you could do. And it also increases our synaptic function in the brain because our neurons uh, use copper to function properly. And all of these health benefits are great, but I'm recommending copper for PK practitioners because it produces energy from carbohydrates within the cells. I mean, it literally gives you more energy. It increases our electrical conductivity, improves cellular energy, uh, improves the production and, and stabilization of the flow of blood uh, within our body, which improves our overall synaptic and circulatory functions. So in short, you know, uh, colloidal copper is, is very good for the body, and it gives practitioners more kinetic power and a much smoother flow of energy. So it gets you some colloidal copper. Right now I'm taking... Uh, one teaspoon a day, and that seems to be plenty. And depending on when you watch this, I'll have colloidal copper available at sacredsupplements.com, or you can make it the same way you make colloidal silver, and you'll have to use warm water and just a little pinch of baking soda and stir it, you know, every few minutes. But it will work. You can do it the same way you do silver. It takes a little more time and effort, but uh, basically the same thing. And if you're unwilling or unable to make or buy colloidal copper, you can also absorb small traces of copper just by wearing copper jewelry directly on your skin. Or, better, drinking water from a copper vessel. Uh, just fill a copper cup or pitcher with pure, high-quality water and allow it to sit overnight and drink a glass or two every day. Uh, I did a little test, and the electrical conductivity of distilled water was zero. And after eight hours in the copper cup, it was four. And the PPM, according to my TDS meter, was zero before, and eight hours later, it was two. So that tells me that it's absorbing the electrical conductivity from the copper cup, as well as a little bit of trace minerals from the copper. So you do get a little doing it that way, and perhaps that's enough, especially if you have a pretty good diet, because you can also get copper from uh, certain foods if they're grown naturally in nutrient-rich soil, which is kind of uncommon these days. But uh, foods that are high in copper are like our uh, organic kale, sesame seeds, 
Uh, again, soaked almonds, the flax seeds, um, morel mushrooms, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, sunflower. Uh, I think there's a few more I can't think of off the top of my head. But, and, and metaphysically speaking, copper is said to balance all three doshas. That's the, the Veda, the Pitta, and the Kapha, which I'll give you a link so you can learn more about that. And for me personally, I have to say I do feel uh, balanced, uh, harmonized, and more synchronized uh, after a few weeks of taking the copper. So that's certainly something you want to add to your PK diet is some colloidal copper. Okay, karmic calories. Uh, karma, you know, this sounds like a new age thing, but it's actually ancient. It was originally a Hindu and Buddhist philosophy, and truth be known, it's probably handed down to them from somebody else. But uh, basically just suggests the quality of our current and future lives is determined by our thoughts and behavior in this and in previous lives. And just from just the way the universe seems to be working, you know, based on my experience, this is true. For example, if you go around, you know, all... Uh, depressed and worried, the universe will just give you more reasons to be depressed and worried. And if you go around, you know, optimistic, uh, the world will give you opportunities to improve. So I believe in it based on experience. I don't think it's a new age uh, thing, you know, it's karma is just, it's natural. But my point being, when we uh, eat dead animals, the, the sheer amount of fear and pain and suffering involved with killing and eating these poor animals is a karmic nightmare. And on top of that, we have all that waste and pollution and the negative health effects of eating meat. I mean, just the whole dead animal thing in your diet is just a, a bad idea, karmically speaking. And also in regard to uh, psychokinesis, that doesn't really seem to help anything by eating dead animals. So once you start raising your vibration, you know, and, and by, when I say vibration, I mean uh, your, your attitude, your morals, your, uh, you know, your, everything you do. If you just start improving that and trying to make it better, uh, your cravings will just begin to change naturally. Uh, so it stands to reason that, you know, if you slowly switching to a mostly raw and vegan diet, it will naturally raise your vibration and improve your psychokinesis. So the whole ascension diet thing kind of works in two ways. You can either change your diet to improve your vibration or you can change your vibration to change your cravings. And the way I see it, it's kind of like, you know, when we're at the bottom in that root chakra, we're willing to eat animals that eat other animals. For example, like, you know, cats and dogs and bears and snakes and unfortunately that includes fish. So these, these foods are like at the bottom of the food chain in my opinion. And as we move up to like the sacral, the next chakra up, uh, we eat animals that only eat plants, like our cows, our chickens, our lambs, turkey, rabbits, and so on. And as we move up even higher in vibration to our solar plexus area, we eat uh, a lot less meat, but we continue to eat animal byproducts like our milk, our cream, our eggs, butters, cheese, grease, all that stuff. And as we uh, move up a little further into the heart area, uh, we start eating the single harvest plants, like, you know, you pick them once and they're dead, uh, corn, potatoes, onions, carrots, beets, cabbage, things like this. And moving up further into the throat chakra, we start eating multi-producing uh, seasonal plants, like, you know, things you can pick from the vine, but the plant keeps growing, like tomatoes, um, cucumbers, grapes, your berries and your melons, things like that. And when we get up into the third eye, which is kind of where the psychokinesis stuff usually kind of kicks in, uh, we start eating perennial producing plants. Uh, particularly from trees like our fruits, uh, oranges, lemons, mangoes, pineapples, and also the nuts that grow on trees like coconuts and almonds and pecans and walnuts. And these are the, really the only food in the world that wants to be eaten. You know, the tree literally wants you to take that fruit, go away, eat it, and leave the seeds on the ground and perhaps grow another tree. So karmically speaking, they are totally karmically clean, and environmentally speaking, they have a very low impact on our environment and they're you know cost efficient because they just keep producing year and year after year so that's the best food you can eat it grows on trees who to thunk it and then uh, another level would be when you get up into that crown area is uh where you basically just need water sunlight and air you know <laughs> become a breatharian which i don't know if that's even possible in the type of environment that we're um, subject to these days but that's the ultimate goal i think we actually started out as breath breatharians and then we started eating fruits and we kind of went downhill from there so and i'm not saying you're a bad person if you eat meat or you're a good person if you eat fruit 
I'm just saying that the vibrations that you consume from these uh, will directly influence your, your mind, body, and spirit. And you eat the high vibration foods, you'll naturally get a higher vibration and have better uh, luck with your PK. Okay. Oh, holy moly. Already over my 20 minutes. But we can't hardly talk about diet without mentioning water. And we only have a few choices of water to choose from. And I guess the first one would be tap water, which is just our municipal water that comes, you know, straight out of our faucet that contains chlorine and fluoride and God knows what else. So I would say that'd be my last choice. Stay away from your tap water and anything bottled in plastic. I'd stay away from that as well. And then, of course, we have filtered tap water, like you could use a Berkey or something with fluoride filters, but that doesn't filter out 100% of the fluoride or all of the chemicals. So that's not really a, a really good choice either. And reverse osmosis, which is great. I mean, you know, all those membranes do remove the, the particles and the pollutants and the minerals and everything. But my problem with reverse osmosis is, at least the ones I've tested, they're acidic. And, you know, that we don't want to drink acidic water because that's just going to help keep our body stay acidic. And then another choice would be uh, deionized water, which has ionized impurities and minerals removed from it. But that doesn't remove the bacteria and pathogens and all that stuff. So that's not really the best. In my opinion, distilled water is the safest and cleanest water we can drink. Because when you distill water, once it's been vaporized and collected, we've left behind all the, the residue, all the chemicals, you know, including fluoride and chlorine and all that stuff. And we just have a nice base for our body. I mean, our body is 75% water. If we have a nice, clean, pure water all day, every day, we'll have a lot better uh, interstitial fluid. So I think distilled water is a way to go. And there's a big scare, you know, oh, distilled water doesn't contain minerals, but that's just a spin, guys. Uh, we don't get our minerals from our water. We get our minerals from food, you know. On the PK diet, we get all the, the good stuff we need by eating healthy, raw foods, you know. So don't worry about the little dab of trace minerals that are in spring water. Uh, just use distilled water and, and drink it with confidence and know it contains no fluoride and anything. All right, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. I was trying to be quick to, to the point, but uh, please check out the links below. Uh, visit some of those channels. Check out some of the information. Get these products that I've mentioned and just start cleaning up your diet because when you start eating natural foods and using natural products, naturally you will get better at psychokinesis. So I hope this information is helpful. And again, I thank you for your time and attention. And I appreciate you watching. This is Trevor Seven. Good day. God bless. And namaste.